Welcome back to the News at 10. And with the summer holiday over and people going back to their stations, Namdi Azikiwe's National Airport in Abuja has been very busy as mild passenger traffic was experienced today. Some of the passengers told our crew that the celebration period was somewhat challenging because their salaries were not paid before the holiday. Others were hopeful that the forthcoming Independence Day celebration will be better. We made our way into the tarmac of the Imnamdi Azikiwe Airport in Abuja to see for ourselves the level of passengers' traffic as they return from the long Eid al Kabir holiday. The traffic was mild as passengers made their way to the arrival session of the airport for their luggage. Some of the passengers we spoke to said the holiday period was difficult as they did not have enough money to celebrate. You should know when the salaries are not paid, a lot of people could not afford to buy things that they normally do, like buying ram and all this. They could not, even some could not buy rice because of salary problem. Everybody is complaining. Everybody is complaining. And uh, a few people that they have to run to for assistance, they have to go around looking for uh, for from friends and relatives to be able to do their salah. You don't expect people to celebrate without money. It's, it's, it's not a good thing. It's never done in anywhere around the world. But we'll, it would be a nice thing if they are paid their salaries and uh, so they can also enjoy. Although it's belated, but they should pay them. Others who had a similar experience during the holiday are, however, hopeful for a more robust Independence Day celebration on October 1. When you're a little broke, it will affect the way you enjoy your holiday as natural. But um, all the same, the salary will still come and they'll have fun with it. The um, uh, independent break is about coming, so when the salary comes, they'll have fun. The change is affecting all areas and uh, all aspects of our life. I know it takes time for people to adjust. Some are complaining, some are okay, but I know within a short period, uh, uh, Nigerians will see the positive aspect of this change that is sweeping across the country. While the holiday period for the majority who travelled the opportunity to visit their loved ones, some who are now returning home for work wished there was more money to spend. Health issues now. Officials of the World Health Organization from the Africa Regional Office in Brazzaville, Congo, are paying a three-day visit to the Sickle Cell Center in Lagos from today, the 28th to the 30th of September. The visit, which will incorporate inspection of facilities in the center, is one of the steps required to determine its worthiness to be elevated to the status of a WHO collaborating center for Africa. Our correspondent, Mary Alale Yusuf, explains. Nigeria welcomes the birth of about 150,000 babies every year with sickle cell anemia, a disorder which is characterized by abnormal red blood cells. According to experts, owing to complications of the disorder, three quarters of these children do not live to see their fifth birthday. In response to this and the recommendation of the World Health Organization for the establishment of national centers to tackle conditions of public health significance, the National Sickle Cell Center was founded. This week, a representation of the WHO from the Africa Regional Office in Brazzaville is visiting the center as part of a process to recognize it as a WHO collaborating center for Africa. Right there, in the heart of all our hospitals, we get these people coming there and we watch them in pain. We have dedicated committee staff who are looking after this, um, this suppressor of this disease. While acknowledging the challenges of sickle cell management, the WHO representatives agree that the center exceeds their expectations. We have insufficient uh, specialized health facilities. I'm sure, based on the interactions we've had so far, if we can just work together, we will arrive at our destination. One of the representatives of the visiting health body gives an idea of what is expected in a standard center. We also have to determine whether the facilities 
meet the standards that are expected. Uh, we also have to determine, for instance, uh, whether the center has uh, enough uh, capacity to train uh, people uh, within the country in Nigeria and but also from other parts of Africa. The WHO representatives from Brazzaville, Congo agree that this center has standard services and highly trained personnel and they have high hopes that it will be designated a WHO collaborating center in the nearest future. Mary Alale Yusuf, Channels Television News. Sky watchers from parts of West Africa, including Lagos, Nigeria, North and South America to Western Europe, were fortunate to enjoy the rare astronomical events that took place early this morning where the moon appeared to redden in the night sky. The supermoon, also described as a blood moon, occurs when the moon is in the closest part of the orbit to the Earth, meaning it appears larger in the sky. The eclipse, which made the moon appear red, was visible in North America, South America, West Africa, and Western Europe. The phenomenon was last observed in 1982 and may not come again until 2033. Channel Television's camera captured the eclipse in the early hours of today. Well, we anticipate President Mahmoud Buhari's speech at the UN General Assembly. The People's Democratic Party has criticized the presidency and its delegation to the UN in New York for failing to attend a humanitarian session where issues concerning internally displaced persons was discussed. At a press conference in Abuja, the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Chief Oli Sametu, told journalists that failure to attend the meeting is an embarrassment to the country. The federal government had dismissed the allegations, saying that the president was not invited to the said meeting. Time now for business news. Here's Anne Mawudu. You first. First Bank. Hello and welcome to Business News. World Economics, a UK-based research firm, has released Nigeria's Sales Managers Index for September, showing a slight decline to 66.1. That's from 66.3 in the month of August. But the report says that the country's business sentiment remains very high. The research says the assessment of Nigeria's economic activity, as measured by the outlook of sales managers, shows business confidence at 91.6 reading this month. Market growth indicator also recorded a six-month running growth, which since September 2014, in line with product sales. The report, however, says Nigeria's inflationary pressure has eased, but still very strong in terms of outlook. In a similar report released today, Nigeria comes first among the big four African countries surveyed in terms of fastest economic growth. Egypt comes second, Algeria is in third position, while South Africa comes last. The Nigerian government has exhausted its statutory borrowing limit that allows it raise bonds and spend in the absence of an agreed fiscal budget in the particular year. While reports say that the Ministry of Finance has prepared a letter to be sent to the National Assembly requesting for a supplementary budget to the prepared and implemented by the Buhari administration. The debt office has borrowed billions of naira on behalf of the federal government since the new year started. As the 2015 budget prepared and signed off last April by former President Goodluck Jonathan and approved by the National Assembly remains unimplemented. After a two-day holiday, the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange resumed today, closing in the positive territory. The all-share index came in at 30,764.37. Harriet Agwini has more. Hello 
and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Trading resumes today after a two-day holiday last week to celebrate a religious holiday for Muslims all over the world. Investors and traders' bullish tendency towards consumer goods and oil and gas stocks pushed the equities market up by 0.72%. The All Share Index ended the day session at 30,764.37 with a market capitalization of 10.57 trillion naira. 25 price gainers were recorded as against 20 price depreciators. Garnering 4.84% to close at 859 naira 70 kobo, Nestle was a top gainer followed by 40 oil up 4.17% to 250 naira. And Nigerian breweries up 4.26% to close at 146 naira for Kobol. Seplat, Julius Berger and Unilever were the worst performers at today's session. The most actively traded were UBA with 59.96 million shares, Guarantee Trust Bank with 49.99 million units and Zenith Bank with 26.40 million units. When the session came to an end, volume came in at 266.65 million shares exchanged by investors in 3,366 deals, valued at 3.17 billion naira. That's the Stock Market Report. I'm Harriet Agbini. Thanks a lot, Harriet. Well, Nigeria's total revenue in the first eight months of 2015 stands at 3.03 trillion naira, and that's down from the projected figure of 4.11 trillion naira. An analysis of the monthly revenue receipts shows that the federal government targets a monthly revenue of 513.69 trillion naira for the 2015 fiscal budget. While well, the persistent drop in the price of oil at the international market, coupled with production shuttings and pipeline vandalism, have impacted negatively on the revenue portfolio of Africa's largest oil producer. And it was mixed sentiment today in markets around the world. Let's now see the market figures. That's it on Business News for tonight. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Amarachi will be back with the rest of the news at 10. You first. First Bank. Still ahead on the news at 10. Sepp Blatter vows to stay on as FIFA president despite criminal proceedings against him. We have details on sports news. Please join us again.